Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Dando dam yavatam asmi Nitterasmi jagishatam Manam jaivasmi guhyanam Gyanam gyanat vatam maham Danda punishment Damayatam of all means of suppression. suppression. Asmi, Asmi. I, am. I am niti, niti. Morality. morality. Asmi, Asmi. I, am. I am jagishatam of those who seek victory. victory. Maunam, silence, silence. Cha. cha and eva also Asmi, I am Guhyanam of secrets, Gyanam, knowledge, Gyanavitam of the wise, Aham, I am. Translation and purport by the Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. Among all means of suppressing lawlessness, I am punishment, and of those who seek victory, I am morality. Of secret things, I am silence. Of the wise, I am the wisdom. Purport. There are many suppressing agents, of which the most important are those that cut down miscreants. When miscreants are punished, the agency of chastisement represents Krishna. Among those who are trying to be victorious in some field of activity, the most victorious element is morality. Among the confidential activities of hearing, thinking, and meditating, silence is most important because by silence one can make progress very quickly. The wise man is he who can discriminate between matter and spirit, between God's superior and inferior natures, such knowledge is Krishna himself. Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Jata Dara Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Suji Sadoraitam Sabadutam Parijana Savitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta 
Svamanuti Namine Namaste Sarasvate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Mukam Kuroti Vachalam Pangunam Yagate Girim Yat Kripatamaham Vande Shri Guru Dinatarinam Krishna is very, very kind. He makes himself very, very approachable. This chapter 10 especially. So many ways we can see Krishna. And you see a police car going with a siren going after somebody. Oh, Krishna. Especially, I have my own experience with Prabhupada back in 71, one of these verses from this chapter 10. Krishna says, I am the taste of water. It was a wonderful day, it was a beautiful day in July of 1971 in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. A beautiful day, it wasn't hot, it was just a very nice afternoon. Prabhupada had come straight from the airport, right to the Bratayantra side. And he got up in Subhadra Devi's car. They had an asan for him there. The very first word that came out of his mouth, this is the first time I had seen Prabhupada. The very first word that came out of his mouth was Jagannath. <laughs> he said, Jagannath Shami, now Yandapada Gami Bhava to me. Lord Jagannath, my Lord Jagannath, my dear Lord Jagannath, Lord of the universe, please come to my vision. So, this chapter 10 actually enables us to, to get that darshan of the, the Lord of the universe, Jagannath, in so many different ways. Prabhupada gave the example that Raso Ham Mapsukonte. He says, every day, you're drinking water once, twice, thrice, more than that. If every time you drink water, you remember that Krishna is the taste of the water. Immediately become Krishna conscious. You can be Krishna conscious by drinking water. Baba said, there he goes, another one drinking the water. <laughs> Remember, Krishna, ah, very nice, Krishna, Krishna. So in this way, Baba said, to become Krishna conscious is not difficult. It simply requires practice. Krishna says, I'm the light of the sun and the moon. Here we are, you see. You can, the sunlight is coming in. You see. Of course, we have some artificial light, but still, you can see the sunlight outside the window, you see. Krishna, Krishna. And then the moon, especially that moon right now, you see. The early morning, the way to Mangalarti, that moon, ah, oh, Krishna, Krishna, you see. So in this way, we, we, we can connect so many things with Krishna. The secrets, I am silence, you see. If somebody is sitting and silently meditating in the Gayatri Mantra, ah, Krishna, you see. Of wise, I am the wisdom. So when you hear a devotee giving a, a very wise class, you see he's very learned in Vedic wisdom, he's giving a very wise lecture. Ah, Krishna, Krishna, this is Krishna, you see. So in this way, you see, just try to experience Krishna everywhere and everything, you see. You may say, that seems kind of difficult, but you know what? If you have that love for Krishna, it's very easy, you see. Simply so you have to love Krishna, that's all. Isn't he lovable? I mean, he's so beautiful. Any ever see anybody as beautiful as Krishna? Wow, 
Oh, he's so beautiful. He's so powerful also. Wow. He's chastising all the miscreants. They're all being crushed by the wheel of time. All the demons are being crushed. He's so powerful. He's so renounced also. You may say renounced with all those girlfriends. How you can say he's renounced? But actually it's confirmed by Grandfather Bhishma. You see. Even though Krishna had so many girlfriends, he remained brahmachari. No sex life, you see. Grandfather Bhishma said, if I'd been with all those girls, I would have fallen down. But Krishna is a greater brahmachari than me. He never fell down, you see. So Krishna is the most renounced, the most powerful, the most beautiful, and the most knowledgeable. He knows absolutely everything. There's not one thing that Krishna doesn't know. He knows everything you've ever said or ever done or ever even thought in this lifetime and in all your millions of lifetimes. He knows every little detail about it, each and every one of us. Can you imagine how, how much he knows? We forget even little things. What was my email address? <laughs> Krishna knows everything. You see. And he's so wealthy also. He owns everything. Can you imagine? You see. Sarvaloka Maheshvaram. I own everything. Wow. You see, this is why we have difficulties in the world. We try to encroach upon the property of Krishna. Mine! Even little children, you see. I remember when I was a little kid, my brother Bob and I, we shared one bedroom in Houston, Texas. And so we had an, a line down like the Great Wall of Berlin, you know. We had a line down the middle of the bedroom, you know. You cannot step over this line. It's my territory. Well, my side was away from the door, so I was allowed to pass through his side to go in and out of the room, but I couldn't linger in his side of the room. I had to move quickly through his side of the room. You see. My territory, mine, you see. So even little children, you have this, mine, it's mine. That's why we have so much difficulty here. The nations are quarreling. That is my territory. The border is here. You see. Vedic culture means no borders. The whole planet is one nation. You see. That was the system. It was ruled from Hastanapur. One nation. But now we Kali Yoga means we divide it into so many different nations. Bhaktaram Dakatapasam Sarva Loka Maheshvaram Suhridam Sarva Bhutanam Jatva Mamushantam Ritstiti Krishna says those who know me as the one who owns everything and thus the one who enjoys everything being it's being my property and is the best friend of every living entity they and only they can have peace of mind. So we want to introduce this peace formula to all the leaders of the world. Let everyone please understand this principle. I wrote one song, because I used to be a songwriter before I became a devotee. I was a popular songwriter. So I wrote one song based on that verse, Bogdan, and I sent it to President Obama. He really liked it. He wrote me a nice letter from the White House, how much he liked the, the song. He said, I want you to know I'm listening. So this concept, Bhaktaram Jagatapasam Sarva Loka Maheshvaram, we want to educate all the world leaders in this concept. Then we can have true peace and happiness throughout the whole world. We just see everything is Krishna's property and ever, ever, everything is meant to be used in his service. And he's not an exploitative owner enjoyer, he's the most merciful best. In fact, it's interesting, there's different types of friends in Sanskrit. There's different words for friends. There's Mitra, Bandhu, and Suhrit, you see. But Suhrit means the, it's like your heart, Suhrit, you see. 
It means the dear most, most intimate friend. Not a casual friend or an acquaintance like Bandhu or Mitra, you see. But Krishna is Suhrit. He's the, most, he's the dear most, most intimate friend, you see. Your, your ever well wisher sitting there within your heart, blessing you unlimitedly in every minute. Did you know them? Krishna is in your heart blessing you unlimitedly in every minute, in every situation. You may say, but, but today I have a bad cold, I'm coughing, is that Krishna's blessing? Yes, everything. Everything is Krishna's blessing. Everything is, everything is being org, uh, engineered, perfectly arranged by Krishna to bring us back to him as soon as possible. The so-called good, bad, beautiful and ugly, it's actually all beautiful. And we just have to have the vision, you see. What is that vision called? Krishna consciousness. Yeah, Krishna consciousness, that's right. You see, everything in relation to Krishna, not my false ego or my false sense of ownership or my mood of enjoyment, kick it out with boot. Krishna consciousness means everything for Krishna. Every thought in my brain has to be for Krishna. Every word coming out of my mouth must be for Krishna. Every action of my body for Krishna. Everything offered is to Krishna. And we can master this art of fully offering everything to Krishna. We will not be living in this material world, actually. We won't be. We will be in the spiritual world with Krishna. We simply have to learn how to dovetail everything for Krishna. The so-called good, bad, beautiful and ugly is all beautiful for those who are Krishna conscious. Because the, the Krishna conscious devotee, the truly Krishna conscious devotee, he's, he feels, he sees, he tastes, he relishes how Krishna is blessing him with unlimited mercy at every minute every minute unlimited mercy showering upon him you see actually it's already happening but we're so dull we think well, why did that have to happen to me yeah you see, you see? we're so dull-headed we can't see it we're still thinking i'm the enjoyer i'm the center of the universe who are you to mess with my territory or my thing or this you see that's the difficulty a hankar you see so the more we hear from the bona fide spiritual master, the more we hear from the sadhus, the more we read these transcendental literatures, the more we engage in devotional service, the more we take the darshan of Krishna Balaram, the more we attend Mangalarti here at the, the Samadhi at 4.10 a.m. and all the other functions as well, the greeting of the deities at 7.15. And wherever you are, the more you can engage in devotional activities. This is purifying the consciousness, purifying the consciousness, purifying the consciousness. Premanjana charita bhakti valochanena santak sadai varhida yeshu valokayanti yang shama shundaram achintya gunas farupam govindam adi purusham tamaham bhajami. By engaging in these devotional activities, we're actually anointing our eyes with the sub of, sub of love of God, you see. Right now, we're blinded by cataracts. Even though Krishna is present, because everything is Krishna, his expanded energy, you see. Krishna is actually present everywhere. But we don't experience that. We see his material energy because we still have this enjoying mood, you see. But for one who has actually uh, purified the vision, they can see Krishna everywhere. Just like Prabhupada told me in one letter, he said, now you just qualify yourself to see Krishna face to face. So these activities that we engage ourselves in, talking about Krishna, hearing about Krishna, bowing down to Krishna, serving Krishna, cooking for Krishna, cleaning for Krishna, distributing books for Krishna, preaching for Krishna, making devotees for Krishna, everything, Krishna, 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 you see. 
that's purifying the vision. A little more, a little more, a little more, and gradually, 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 then day will come, and we will see Krishna. It's like we're seeing each other right now. I'm seeing you, you're seeing me. We will see Krishna. You see, we will see him. So we just have to take this process step by step. You see. With great enthusiasm. Prabhupada gave me another, I got so many wonderful personal instructions from Prabhupada. When I got initiated, I, I, he didn't, he didn't do the yoga. Vishnu John Swami did the yoga. Papa was in London and he wrote a letter uh, accepting me and two other boys as his disciples. So Vishnu John Swami did the yoga there in our Austin Center. So then normally you just turn your dakshina into the ceremony, right? But Papa's in London. So now I have to mail my dakshina. But I get to write a letter to Papa along with a dakshina. And he responded very, very nicely. I told Papa how I want to spread this movement, you see. And he really liked that. He really liked that. He wrote me a wonderful letter, he said. He gave me the, like the, like the treasurer, he gave me the exact amount of the three checks to make sure, you know, they show they hadn't gotten lost. He, he sent me three checks for this amount, this amount, exactly the dollars and the cents. He sent me the, the exact dollar and cent amounts of each check I sent him as a puck of businessman, you see. And then he said, but I can see you're a very sincere, enthusiastic boy, he said. Now continue enthusiastically as you were doing, and surely Krishna will bless you. Well, that was almost 50 years ago. Almost 50 years ago, Prabhupada told me that, you see. Is that instruction still potent? You're damn right, it is. Prabhupada is still here, he's still present, you see. The spiritual master is present in the orders he gives his disciples. When one meditates on the instruction the spiritual master has given you, you are packed up tightly with your spiritual master. So Prabhupada is with me when I remember that instruction. And I try to be enthusiastic, even if I'm sick like I am today, really sick. Sick in bed, actually. I got out of bed to come give the lecture today. <laughs> sick, very sick today. Some infection in my lungs, you see. But I, by Prabhupada's grace, you see, I feel this great enthusiasm for telling people about Krishna. A great enthusiasm for remembering my beloved Guru Maharaj and his wonderful mission, you see. So now we'll look at the next verse. That was text 38, now I'm supposed to do 39 as well. Yatschapi sarva bhutanam bijam tadaham arjuna natadastivana yatsyan maya bhutam chara charam. Furthermore, O Arjun, I am the generating seed of all existences. There is no being non moving, uh, there is no being moving or non moving that can exist without me. Wow, he makes it pretty clear, doesn't he? report. Everything has a cause and that cause or seed of manifestation is Krishna. Without Krishna's energy nothing can exist, therefore he is called omnipotent. Without his potency neither the movable nor the immovable can exist. Whatever existence is not founded on the energy of Krishna is called maya, that which is not. Krishna is the, actually this is interesting, there was one Christian theologian, famous Christian theologian, Paul Tillich. He said that God is the ground of our being. And that's actually a correct concept. You see. Everything, Krishna is the ground of everything that exists. He's the foundation of everything that exists. He's the very substance of everything that exists. Nothing can exist without Krishna. Everything that exists is the manifested energy of Krishna. So whatever you're seeing, whatever you're tasting, whatever you're thinking about, everything, it's all Krishna's energy. It's all coming from Him. Therefore, the perfection of every thought, word, and deed is to offer it back to Krishna. You see. 
we don't try to enjoy it separately because then we're not acknowledging where it's coming from. By offering everything back to Krishna, then the most wonderful mystical process happens. When you offer to Krishna, Krishna gives you more facility, you see. Oh, he's offering this to me. Let, him, let me give him more facility to offer to me, you see. So the more you offer Krishna, your thoughts, your words, your deeds, in all times, places, and circumstances, he gives you more facility to do even more. And more and more and more with ad infinitum. There's no limit to how much you can absorb yourself in loving service to Krishna. There's no limit. It's absolutely infinite potential there for going deeper, deeper, deeper. It's like an ocean that has no bottom. The deeper you go, the sweeter it gets. And you never hit the bottom, it just keeps getting, you go deeper and deeper, it gets sweeter and sweeter. That is Krishna consciousness. It's an ocean with no bottom, a bottomless ocean that goes on into infinity. It becomes sweeter and more ecstatic the, more, the deeper you go, you see. So we have our deep sea diving equipment. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So how much nectar is there in Hare Krishna? This was answered by Jamanacharya. No, I think it's no, Rupa Goswami, that's right. Tunde Tandavatang Vitanate Tadavali Labdhi. Karna Krita Kadama Ne Gataya Te Kadai Bradri Brasvaham Chaita Pangana Sangani Vijayatin Sarvana Dakim Na Jane Janita Kriyadvir Amite Krishna Divarna Dvai I do not know how much nectar these two syllables Krishna have produced because when I vibrate Krishna there's so much nectar that my one little mouth can't hold all that nectar. I need millions of mouths to hold the nectar that's coming out of Krishna. And when Krishna enters the holes of my ears, oh, oh, there's so much nectar. I need billions and trillions and quadrillions and quintillions of ears to capture that nectar. When Krishna dances in the courtyard of my heart, I'm totally stunned. I'm totally stunned in a state of unlimited transcendental wonderment. So we have to remember this. Wonderful verse from Rupa Goswami. And try to go deeper, 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 deeper deeper into Namaruchi, awakening that original loving feeling. This is not artificial. We're actually all Krishna's associates from the spiritual world who misused our free will, our independence, to try to enjoy separately from Krishna. So we're not artificially imposing anything on ourselves by taking to this process. What we are doing is removing all the artificial impositions that the material energy has imposed upon us, has programmed us to try to enjoy separately. Actually, there is not even one pinch of enjoyment separate from Krishna. But the false propaganda of the material nature is you can enjoy, you can enjoy, get intoxicated, eat whatever you want, McDonald's, double cheeseburger, have sex with this girl, with that girl, with that guy, whatever, whatever, whatever you see. And then propagandized by the material energy, very badly programmed by the material energy to think we can enjoy separately from Krishna. But actually there's not even one pinch of enjoyment separate from Krishna consciousness. We have to be absolutely convinced of this. So we stop looking to the material energy for enjoyment. You see, even after we get initiated, we take up the process, but still we have that latent tendency to look to the material energy for enjoyment, isn't it? 
You know what I mean? Yeah. We still try to enjoy the material world. We're so stupid, dull-headed idiots. We still try to enjoy the material world. So that's why we have to read Prabhupada's books. That's why we have to hear from gurus, from advanced devotees, you see. To remind us there is absolutely not even a, an infinitesimal tinge of enjoyment here in this material world. The only satisfaction is to come back to Krishna. Krishna, 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 Krishna. That is the only satisfaction. So this process works. If you work the process, don't try to water it down with sense gratification. You see? Sometimes devotees do that. They try to water down the process with sense gratification. But you know what? They may get their sense gratification, but they won't get Krishna. You see? You have to purely practice this process. And then Krishna becomes your personal property. You have Krishna, you see. When you give yourself totally to Krishna, then Krishna becomes your personal property. Such a person, he can give Krishna to the whole world, you see, like Prabhupada, you see. He possesses Krishna because he has fully given himself to Krishna. Therefore, Krishna has fully given himself to Srila Prabhupada. That's why such an empowered Jagat Guru, you see, can give Krishna to the whole world, you see. So we are the most fortunate recipients of the mercy of his divine grace. Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa. Parivajaka charja asta tarazata shi shiman esi bhakti vadanta tri dandi gosmami maharaj prabhupada. So fortunate we are. Let us not now look the gift horse in the mouth, as they say. Let us now take full advantage of this mercy of Srila Prabhupada and embrace pure devotional service as our only business. From now on, for all of eternity, let my every thought, my every word, my every deed, and every single situation be 100% pleasing to my spiritual master, to Srila Prabhupada, to Lord Chaitanya, and to Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. Let me do everything for their pleasure from now on and stop trying to be this rascal brat trying to enjoy separately from Krishna, you see. If we take this up with great determination, enthusiasm and patience, our success is guaranteed, absolutely guaranteed. This process works. If you take the process as it is given by Srila Prabhupada, you don't try to water it down with mental speculation or sense gratification. If you take this process exactly as Srila Prabhupada has given it, Krishna will become, in due course of time, your personal property. You'll be as good as back to home, back to Godhead, even here in this material world. You see. So we have a few minutes left. If there's any questions, I can try to answer them. Yes, I may have, may have some help with my hearing defect here. Well, we have 15 minutes, yeah. Huh? <coughs> we have, we go in at 6.30. Huh? Okay. Jai Prabhu, how may I help? I love your sign, how may I help you? This is a Vaishnava. How may I help you? If I see a beautiful woman, I see that. If he says what? If I see a beautiful woman. Oh, okay. I see Krishna in her. Yeah. And if I embrace her and this one, I have a feeling that I'm having a good time with her. So, thinking that is, Krishna has given me this pleasure. So, can you do something about it? No, she is not for your enjoyment, rascal. 
She's for Krishna's enjoyment. Prabhupada said, actually, uh, Krishna is sending so many beautiful girls, you see, to our movement. And Prabhupada said, Krishna will dance Rasa dance with them. <laughs> it's not for you, rascal. They're for Krishna. Don't you try to enjoy those. These girls are all Krishna's property. They're not yours for your enjoyment. They're for Krishna's enjoyment, not yours. Your service is to connect them with Krishna. That will give you greater... To connect a beautiful girl with Krishna will give you more satisfaction if you try to enjoy her separately from, you see. If you try to enjoy her separately, actually you're cutting yourself off from Krishna. But if you, off, you take that beautiful girl and you offer her to Krishna, you see, then you become unlimitedly satisfied. More than any kind of sex pleasure or embracing pleasure you could enjoy. By offering it to Krishna, you get millions and billions of times more pleasure. Okay? Jai. Okay, next. Yeah. You were saying about when we see the moon, we can think of Krishna and all the beautiful things we can think of Krishna. What happens when we see horrible things in the world? How do we see Krishna? Yeah, when some horrible thing happens, like you know, nine one one, you know, for example, in the U.S., you can see that uh, Krishna is also punishment. We read today, isn't it? Of all, I, of all means of suppression, law and I am punishment. So the. The, all these things that are going bad in the world, it's actually, they're getting their reactions for past sins. Uh, people are being punished because uh, they're getting a, they're burning off their, re their reactions from past sinful activities. That's actually purifying them. To get rid of those reactions means they're in a, a pure state now. They're more able to actually come to Krishna consciousness. They may be killed, they may be maimed, so many things. It's all Krishna's mercy, actually, to help them become free of the reactions for all their sinful activities so they can become more serious now to see what lies beyond this material existence. Thank you. Jai. Does anybody else, how about some challenges? Uh, anybody want to challenge? Okay. Taste of the mind. Wine. 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 Okay, yes. Said, the taste of that's a there's a verse like that? Yeah, taste. Gave some like this, okay? yeah, that's right. I remember that. If the wino thinks he because wine is also water, you see. If the wino thinks the taste of the wine is Krishna, then he he becomes Krishna conscious actually. Actually some hippies used to do that kind of stuff. They would offer the L S D to Krishna. Before they took the LSD. I mean, now I'll take Pashadam LSD. Because it's nonsense. But then they gave up LSD and they became devotees. Cause they, so the, the idea is there, uh, it's, if, if he just gets drunk, that's one thing. But he thinks the taste of the mind is Krishna. Then he's making progress. It's a fair. Are you asking before coming to Krishna consciousness, I was going to church listening over the Christ. And that time, once I was in the party with somebody and having wine and non-veg everything. So I this is what Jesus has given us. So this is just like Jesus is offering us that I am the wine and the yeah, fish yeah. is eating to the yeah. people. Well, they have an idea in Christianity, the communal wine, yeah. holy communion. Of course, in our church, we had grape juice. We didn't. We didn't. But in some churches they actually have liquor. It's a holy communion. It's a fact. But you're not very much, just a little bit. Um, see, I, and I remember as a Christian, we had, actually what we got in our church was a little wafer. Or maybe it was a little tiny bit of juice, I forget. We only got it once every four months. Or once every three months, we get a little tiny wafer or a little tiny thing of juice. But in Krishna consciousness, every meal is Holy Communion. So, 
Everything we eat is Holy Communion, so it's it's much better deal. Our Holy Communion, we we like it. We think Holy Communion is very nice. We have it at every meal. My only, uh, you know, once a year, once every, and um, every four times a year, we have Holy Communion with every meal. So when I came to Krishna consciousness, then I saw that so much nice prasadam getting the things which were I was not eating, just like an eggplant and other things. Uh, I never used to eat those things. And then when I came to Krishna consciousness, I said, "Even Krishna is taking this one. Why shouldn't I take?" So uh, remembering Krishna and taking those things. I never felt that I am taking something which I don't like. Because Krishna yeah, has I had the same experience when I was... Whether it is too much salt or sometimes too much chimneys or too much oil, but Krishna is taking so I have to take also. But sometimes the body doesn't accept those things. But still you remember Krishna and nothing happens. Just like sweets, I will take sweets. I have sugar. People say you are taking sugar, you have sugar, you cannot take sweets. I say I think it is Prasha, Krishna Prasha, so I don't feel anything that I have sugar or something. That doesn't react on me that whatever I'm doing. Of course, not that we can just eat a thousand sweet balls every day, you know. I mean, there's some limit to that, but yeah. I know when I was a boy, I hated asparagus. I remember my mother said, son, eat your asparagus. I was like, Egh. But now, I, asparag asparagus prasadam, I like it very much, you see. So yeah, when you come to Krishna consciousness, things are, it changes everything. It really does, it changes everything. Everything becomes simply wonderful. <laughs> Actually, you know, that's, you know that story. My godbrother Nandakishore Prabhu, he said, Srila Prabhupada, what happens when we give someone on the street is simply wonderful? Prabhupada said, he will eat that wonderful sweet and he will come to your temple and he will become simply wonderful. <laughs> Krishna is simply wonderful. The process of Krishna consciousness is simply wonderful, and you all are simply wonderful. And then one devotee said, Prabhupada is simply wonderful. And Prabhupada said, that's all right, have kirtan. <laughs> so it's a fact, this is a simply wonderful process. By taking simply wonderfuls and distributing simply wonderfuls and talking this simply wonderful philosophy and hearing this simply wonderful philosophy and bowing down to the simply wonderful Krishna, the simply wonderful Vaishnava, the simply wonderful spiritual master. All this, th the more you do these things, the more you become simply wonderful and the more you taste every moment as its sweetest treat. Krishna kindness means feasting 24 hours a day. Feasting on loving, loving Krishna. That is the ultimate feast, you see. We get to feast 24-7 here. We feast on loving Krishna, having loving reciprocation with Krishna. And it's not one-sided. Krishna reciprocates with us. Anything else? Thank you, Shana. Uh, like all the Prabhupada disciples who are following the process 100%, can we take this, that Krishna is now their property? Like Krishna is what? Um, all the Prabhupada disciples who are following 100%, uh, can we consider that Krishna is the person property of them? Uh, to the extent that they... Krishna becomes the personal property to the extent of how much one is absorbed in serving him. So it's, it depends. You see? It depends how... Because there's different levels of purity, you see. When you're 100% pure, Krishna is p p p totally your property. If you're 99% pure, he's 99%. So there's a scale, you see. Because not every devotee is on the same level of spiritual advancement. Some are more advanced, some are less advanced. So the more one is advanced, the more Krishna is his property. I mean, there are Prabhupada disciples who have totally given it up to, gone back to Maya. Many have left. It's not this being a proper disciple, some kind of a carte blanche. I'm a proper disciple, they're a pure devotee. No way. You see, it doesn't matter whether you're a proper disciple or a grand disciple. It simply matters of how serious you are to awaken pure love of God within your heart. That's all that counts. You see. Being a proper disciple is not kind of a magic one. There's so many proper disciples doing all kinds of nonsense. You see. It's how much you're sincere to awaken pure love of God within your heart. 
That's what determines how much Krishna becomes your property. You understand? Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Is this in today's verse? Okay. Mm. Is this 38 or 39? 28 verse. 20, 38, okay. All right. Oh, yeah, among the activities, okay. Yeah. So what is your question? What is the meaning of silence? It means no talk nonsense. Silence means don't talk nonsense. I only talk about Krishna. Just like we're being silent today. I only talk in Krishna Kata. Silence means only talking about Krishna. That's the meaning of silence for a devotee. And why they are called as confidential activities? Why what? Why they are called confidential activities. Yes. These are very personal things. They're private things actually. What you're hearing, thinking and meditating is your private activity. It's not like you're walking down the street, everybody can uh, knows what you're thinking and it's a private thing. Would you say that any topics you think, feel or will act is confidential? Not well there's different meanings of the word confidential can look it up in the dictionary. I don't have my smartphone here. But yeah, there's different meanings of the word confidential. You can analyze that. When Chaitanya used to talk all this talk confidential Yeah. Only for certain souls. Yeah. So confidential, be such a question, I would look it up in the dictionary. Prabhupada is very expert in, in using words. So I mean, such a, for such questions, I would say look in the dictionary and see all the different meanings of confidential and what meaning would apply to this context. That's what I would do. Because I, I, that's what I would do. I'm even looking, see right now, where is it? In reference dictionary, let's see, confidential. Let's see what Merriam-Webster has to say about the word confidential. Confidential. Marked by intimacy or a willingness to confide. Private, secret. Certainly private or secret would, could apply in this thing. Because what you're thinking about is not the, the whole world knows. It's your private business. It's confidential. What you're meditating on, even what you're hearing may, may be confidential. No Does that make sense to you? Okay. Anything else? Yes. Yeah. Um, we had a helper and uh, her husband was a drunkard. So every day uh, he used to harm her beating because he was highly intoxicated. So um, can we represent uh, Krishna and uh, uh, punish him uh, as a miscreant or uh, should we consider that uh, she is uh, approving her karma? Let me catch up now. What is he saying? Okay. There is a helper. Uh, what? Helper. Helper? Yeah. And who uh, 
her husband used to uh, drink and then uh, beat her. Um, Who's this helper? Um, uh, 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 Someone is helping in your house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so how should we react? Uh, should we think that uh, she is burning off her karma, or should we uh, try to um, uh, call police um, uh, and then punish him? Um, it's both both things. I would, I would, in such situations, you can do both. Um, this like one time we had an armed robbery in our Miami temple. You see, saying, "Well, it's Krishna's arrangement. Just give him the money." No. The bandits came. We was during milk prasadam. The bandits came. One guy had a stocking over his face and a shotgun. The other guy had a pistol. And they they came in during milk prasadam, and they said. They grabbed back then, back then Patty, Patty, and they had a gun in her head. She was going, eh, and then they had a hand over her mouth. Mm. With a gun, they had, they had artists to get on the floor, they were going to shoot her. So just because it's, you know, it's not that, well, it's Krishna's arrangement, we just have to surrender to the thieves. So they ordered everybody to get on the floor, but I didn't, I didn't think we should get on the floor. I didn't, everybody else bowed down and got on the floor, but I didn't. I decided that I'm not going to bow down to these rascals and get on the floor. I d but I just did this. I yelled out, Nishringadev! Well, Bhaktan Patty no longer had the gun pointed at her. Now I had the gun pointed at me. And I said, where are your friends? What do you want? He said, the money. Where is the money? So anyway, the temple treasury was adjoining the Peshadam room, but there was no sign that said treasury. And our temple president, Abhiram, he heard something going, he heard somebody yelled in the Shringadev out there in the Pashadam, what's going on out there? He came out of the treasury, and he went, <laughs> and he turned around to go back to the treasury, and the, 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 uh, the bandit took the pistol and smashed him on the head and cut him on the head. But Abhiram was very cool-headed. The, the treasurer had a gun sitting in the drawer in the desk. He out loud, he said, Get the gun and shoot the bastards. <laughs> when they heard that, they were running like they ran. Actually, he, the, the Temple president, there's no days there was a military discipline. Whatever the Temple president said, you just do it without thinking. The Temple, the treasurer, gra he out of a chariot, he grabbed that gun and went, pow, and he missed. He went, the bullet went to the wall. But you, sometimes you have to take action if something's not right. And uh, we took action, and the thieves didn't get away with any money, and they never, they never came again for milk prasadam. My question is that, does it happen at your home or her home? Uh, so what they can take the action? It's difficult. I mean, I have aspiring disciples who are being beaten by their husbands, who are not devotees. I mean, you know, it's a very difficult thing. How to deal with these things. But we have to protect the devotees. Is she a devotee? She is a, she's not she's not Krishna conscious. She used to chant sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, it's a difficult thing is if she was her many devotee you would probably do more. If she was initiated devotee you would do more, but just she's just a, a paid worker. I mean you have to, it's very difficult. Um, it's called Desha Kalapatra, time, place and circumstance. You have to pray to Krishna sometimes how to deal with the situation. I mean, I, I, I take advice from someone, I mean, I, uh, she's not even a devotee, so I have to encourage her how to deal with it, you know. Tell her to call the police when, the, when he does it. Threaten. She should take, I mean, I don't know, it's a very personal question about a specific situation, it's not philosophy. This is a philosophical class. But you could tell her to uh, call the police every time he does it, for example. That might curb him down a little bit. Notify the police this is happening, like that. Anything else? Everyone satisfied? We're actually over time now. 6.30. So we thank everyone very much. Please take these words very seriously.
and become the pure devotees of Krishna and let us make now the whole world Krishna conscious. Shri Baba Bada Ki Jai.